here. I hope you're doing well. Listen, today we're going to be talking about something very important. I can't wipe the smile off of my face because it's overcoming objections, right? And, and listen, you, you don't have to worry about like, is this only sales stuff? Because you face, whether you realize this or not, you face objections all throughout your day, all throughout your life. It doesn't matter if it's in your relationships, if it's fi you know finance objections, the banker telling you no, like we're gonna help you with that today, right? Maybe it's like your your health objections, right? Maybe maybe you're like inside of your head, you're telling yourself like, oh, I'm so tired, I can't go work out. I'm gonna help you with that today with this AIA formula, okay? I'm super excited that you're here. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button because uh, we've got tons of content that are gonna help you grow as a person, as an entrepreneur, and it's my life's mission to help people just like you. So thanks for tuning in. I promise it's gonna be a little bit of a long video, uh, but I, I promise you, when I get through all of this, uh, you're going to be able to go out and crush objections like a pro. So uh, I'm, I'm here in my studio in Louisville and I'm so excited that you've joined me this evening to watch this video. Um, and, and I hope that I can bring you so much value that you're going to be able to go out and it doesn't matter if it's finances, if it's in, in your relationships, right? How many of us how many of us have had objections in our relationships, right? Um, in this this really has to do with some per persuasion stuff, right? Because um, really, if you're going to persuade someone, it's about moving them through their objections, right? And so, and so no matter if it's your finances, your relationships, maybe it's, it's some persuading that you need done in, in your current life. Maybe you need to persuade yourself internally um, or, or maybe persuade your spirituality a little bit to make some changes, but it doesn't matter the AIA formula is going to help this, right? And so let's hop right into this. What's the first A? The first A is you've got to acknowledge this. When you're in a sales situation or whether you're dealing with someone uh, on a personal level, you have to acknowledge their objections. There's, there's so much rhetoric out there in, in the sales world and in the business climate that says that you know, well, just ignore them. Just ignore the objections and push through. That doesn't work, okay? We maybe, That might have worked back in 1970. That might have worked back in 1960. But that doesn't work anymore, okay? And here's why. We have developed as people. We are now smarter. We are more cognizant, right? The same sales tactics at a car dealership don't work now like they worked back in 1970. Are you with me on that? You all right? You understand? So you have to understand that, that you have to acknowledge people's objections. So when I'm working on like, hey, listen, coach, um, I can't do that because I don't just tune out. I become a good listener, right? Two ears, one mouth. Sometimes as salespeople, we need to shut up and just listen. Because, because here's what happens. Our, our spouses, our prospects, here's a big one, our employees, they tell us what the problem is, right? They, they're they're going to tell us what their objection is and so that we can work through it. So you have to acknowledge that. You have to acknowledge that objection. You have to say, listen, I understand, Mrs. Johnson, that uh, our premium is twice as high, right? You have to repeat back to them what that objection is. Like, let them know that you understand the objection that they're talking about. When you're with your spouse, right? <laughs> this is a good one. And so they're like, listen, honey, here's my problem. Ooh, antennas should go up when they say, here's my problem, here's my challenge, here's my, here's my objection to what's going on here. You need to understand that you gotta acknowledge it, man. There's no way to get past an objection until you acknowledge what the hell's going on. You gotta, you gotta acknowledge that they maybe don't have the money. Too many salespeople, listen to me, too many salespeople will try to sell to a prospect when they ain't got the money. Like, let me step back here so you can see the camera frame. 
They ain't got the money in their pockets. You have to understand there's a difference between like, uh, I can't afford it and it costs too much. Okay? So like, I know we're talking about objections here, but let me tell you the difference between I can't afford it and it costs too much. I can't afford it means I literally like, grab this cat. I ain't got it, man. I don't have the cash to give you today. I want the Ferrari, but I can't afford it. Right? You, if you can't afford it, if you don't have the money to buy it, that's a different objection to saying, well, it costs too much. When someone tells you that it costs too much, it's too expensive, that simply means they don't see the value. You haven't supplied them with enough value to be able to spend the money, okay? When value tips over the top, people will spend the cash, okay? Write that one down if you're taking notes, okay? So we gotta, we gotta acknowledge them. We gotta say, look, I understand Mrs. Jones, you, here's your objection, repeat it back to them, okay? And so once we acknowledge it, we don't ignore it, no, 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 no. We identify with it. We identify with it. So when she says, you know, coach, uh, I, I really love everything about this. Um, I, I, I really would like to have this thing, this idea, this service that you're gonna provide for me. Um, but you know, I just, I, I, um, I, can't, I can't do it, I can't do it. Well, let's identify. Let's identify. Is that the only problem? Is that the only problem? Look, Mrs. Ma Mrs. Smith, is the value of it? Listen, if this thing was free, would you take it? Let me tell you, if, if I did it myself, right? Because you, maybe you're saying, I don't want to work with another salesperson. I don't want to work with somebody else. Okay, well, Mrs. Smith, if, if I was the person to come out here and shovel the mulch, if I was the person to write the insurance policy, if I was the person to sell the house for you, would you do it then? Right? Because when you identify, you isolate. Okay? So this I is a two-part problem here. Let me do this here. We got to identify, and then we got to isolate. Take me back to my football days. I saw. Because what happens is until you isolate the problem, until you isolate the objection that the prospect is having, you're going to just be treading water. Like, who wants to tread water? Business is ever flowing. So you have to understand that you've got to acknowledge it. You've got to identify so that then you can isolate and so when we remove that objection from the equation, right, this is my favorite, like, a lot of times when I get objections, <laughs> I'm going to give you guys two and one, if that's okay with you, okay? A lot of times, this whole equation, the objections can be solved if you put them in your sales process, if you put them in your sales presentation, right? So, prime example, I was a property manager today, and um, you know I'm really good <laughs> at getting numbers from them out of their budget. Like, tell me what it costs. Because in in commercial sales, if you're doing B2B business, listen, there's these things called budgets, and and there's a lot of people out there that will tell you you can be 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 percent higher. It's bullshit. Okay. What happens is if you're about seven to eight percent more expensive, you can sell the contract, okay? I can teach you things that will tell, that, that will help you work through that. But if you're 20, 30, 40% higher, people are gonna, uh, it's just not gonna happen, right? We have businesses to run. Hopefully you understand that as a business person. But what happens is, in this objection, I wanna eliminate price from the get. Like, right out the gate, I wanna eliminate price as being an objection. So how do I do that? I just ask them, what's your budget? Most people are like, what? Bro, you can't just ask people what their budget, how much money you got to spend. Yes, you can. If you build a relationship first, okay? So today, I walk into this property manager's office and I'm selling them services for Easy Pro. And uh, 
You know, after I build the relationship, right? I didn't just come in there and say, hi, Melissa, nice to meet you. My name's DJ with Easy Pro. Hope you're doing well, blah, 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 blah. How much, what's your budget? No, I kind of tiptoe around it a little bit. And here's how I do this. So I walk in, I meet with them. I say, hey, have, have you guys ever had this service performed before? Because I'm trying to figure out, have they experienced the experience I'm about to give them? And if you're in a service business, you need to make sure that they're not comparing you to an inferior service, okay? Do you understand me on that? Yeah. Here's the thing. When I talk to that, that manager, I say, listen, have you ever done this before? Ah, oh, well, we've done it on some other properties. It wasn't really my property. So, you know, I, I kind of know. That means no. <laughs> right? No one, no, no one wants to tell you, like, no, I have no clue what the hell's going on here. So you have to be, be conscious about this. And so... What I do is I'm like, all right, so here's what we do, X, Y, Z. Now, and, and do you guys already have something in your budget or is this like new things going in? She tells me, oh, no, 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 I, I already have some money set aside in my budget. Um, we, we put it in there. Uh, I took some pricing from some other properties and I added a little bit and I put it into the budget. And I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, we're not pouncing on that yet. I'm gonna circle the block and come back around, okay? So a lot of times salespeople, they're, they're too pushy, they're um, too antagonistic, um, they may be, some of them are just, lack of better terms, just dumb. Like they, they go in and they're just like, ah, they puke all over themselves. And so when she told me, like, I already have money in the budget, but we're looking to do this next year. I'm like, fantastic. The, the money thing, she can't say I don't have the money, coach, because I know it's already in the budget. And for you, for those of you out there, like, if they already have money in the budget, go take it. Like, what? Like, you're going to lose a deal over $1,000 and, like, people are like, mm, no, DJ, that doesn't make sense. Uh, my price is, my first price is my best price, and that is what it is. Like, you're an idiot because I'm going to come in and swoop in and steal the jobs out from underneath of you. I'm going to steal the contracts out from underneath of you. I'm going to close the deals that you won't do because your pride is too big. <laughs> Right, so, so we sit there and talk, we talk about the service a little bit, I talk about the difference, I talk about my distinguishing characteristics, okay? Write that down, distinguishing characteristics. What makes you different from everybody else, man? If I'm gonna call a plumber, or I'm gonna call an insurance agent, what the hell, man, what, what makes you different? A plumber is a plumber, a landscaper is a landscaper, a roofer is a roofer, uh, uh, an, an insurance guy is an insurance guy, a uh, real estate agent is a real estate agent. It doesn't matter. If you're in the service business, you have to have some distinguishing characteristics. So I walked through that. I walked through that with her. And that's a, that's a whole other video. We can get into that. But, but I'm over here. I'm like, all right, I got to identify and isolate right so like we're we're talking and meeting and stuff and she straight up's like tell me i got money in a budget I'm like, okay do 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 i do my dance i'm like all right how many buildings how many units da 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 i'm asking her questions and and it gets to the point where it feels like it's wrapping up okay like i'm i'm about to be like okay i'm out of here thanks thanks for meeting with me i said oh by the way you guys said that you had some money in the budget. You already put money in the budget. Um, is there a certain dollar amount we need to stay under so that we can make sure, here it is, flipping it back in her lap. We can make sure that you can get this service done next year, right? Tell me the number that allows you to receive the benefit. I'm gonna say that again. Tell me the number that allows you to receive the benefit. There is no reason to go in and shoot in the dark and let this pop up. What I'm doing right now is laying the foundation so that when I come in and present my solution, it's well within their budget, right? And now, I, the lady shared with me some numbers, made sense to me, and, and we're gonna be able to do some business. Now listen, I would much rather get this objection out of the way before I provide my solution to them, right? Listen to me on this. I would much rather 
say, whoa, you are you guys are way out in right field. There is no way this project can get done for that. I, I don't even need to go look at it. You're not even in the ballpark. Let's have that conversation on the first meeting. Why do salespeople want to have continued emails back and forth, do all the due diligence, do all of the quoting, go find all of the work. Like you guys put tremendous amounts of work into preparing a solution for a client, right? Would you agree with me on that? You prepare solutions and it takes time, effort, money, energy. Why not get this thing out of the way? Because listen, I've, I've spoken on stages all across the United States and the Cayman Islands. Listen, this right here, when I, when I go, all right guys, let's talk about the number one objections you guys get. The first one's like, price! People say I'm too expensive. You have to understand, if that's gonna be the case, bruh, let me get it on the front end. Tell me I'm too expensive now, so I don't do all the work and figure it out later. <laughs> Overcoming objections. Acknowledge it. Let's acknowledge the price objection today while I'm here in your office. Let's get it all figured out so that when I come back and provide you with a solution, it's not even an objection. It's impossible, Melissa. You told me you had 20,000 in your budget. I'm at 19.6. There's no money objections here. It's a good one. All right, identify and isolate. So once we identify it, maybe, listen, sometimes people are like, listen, TJ, I just don't like you, bro. <laughs> listen, I understand, George, but if I were to replace myself, like if I will leave, I'll bring Tina, Tommy, Tulane, somebody will come in here without the name DJ. It won't be me. Would you do business with us then? You guys aren't willing to ask that question though. You have to be, remove yourself from the situation, okay? Identify ISO. The last one, you gotta get on with your agenda, man. Some of you all get so caught up in here, in your heart, in here, in your brain, that you can't move past an objection. I know people that literally will start hyperventilating when someone says you're too expensive. <laughs> I'm not too expensive, you know what I'm worth? Like, you can't do that, man. You gotta get over that shit. We got an agenda here. We're trying to close a deal. At least I'm trying, are you trying to close a deal? I hope you're trying to close a deal. I hope that's why you're here. That's why you're subscribing to the Coach Carroll channel. That's why you're coming to see me speak on stages and, and, and hire me to help coach you or maybe you're picking up Sales Excellence University. It's an, about an agenda, man. We're trying to help people. We're trying to close deals to provide a service so that we can give them the solution they need. Too many salespeople are stuck on the money. This right here is not enough to carry you to the big leagues. You have to be sold on your solution. You have to be sold on the fact that today, you know, I'm looking at like roof cleaning for Easy Pro, and I'm like, man, if we clean these roofs, they could probably get another 50 to $75 a month out of these units because of the carpet pill increase. That's what I'm selling. Now, I, I'm not selling roof cleaning. I'm selling a 75%, you know, $75, sorry, $75 increase per unit on rent. Acknowledge, identify and isolate, move on to the agenda. You guys can't just sit there and like slow roast in these objections. It will kill you. Absolutely. So that's it, guys. That's overcoming objections. Hope it brought you some value. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Leave me a comment. What's what's some of the, and I'll help you. Like, what's your objection? What's something that you've been struggling to, to, to move through this AIA process, the system that I've built for here for you here today that, that I use day in and day out to grow multi-million dollar companies. So uh, let me know, leave a comment down below. I hope you overcome the objections and uh, smash that subscribe button, leave a comment, thumbs up, 
appreciate it and thanks so much for watching. I'm Coach Carroll. Until next time, here's to your success.